All right. Um, Couch Pilots co-host replacement interview number six. Adam Z. A-T-O-M. It's a joke. Um, let me give him a call here real quick. Hello, Adam. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, Adam. Um, heard the Couch Pilots episode a few weeks ago. Um, you Island did C- hear that. Island City. Yeah, I didn't. I, I forgot you listened to the episode. Oh yeah, that. yeah. For con- that was, that was continuity great. You guys reasons. Did a real great job. Oh, oh, we did a good job because um, I do remember doing a very good job with my current co-host, Captain Kemo Slice, alliteration. Yeah, yeah. And no, I get it. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. And then I went back to listen to that episode, and Shaw enough, we uh, that episode wasn't there at all. It was you and uh, even Gayer Dave that's on your Low Blow <laughs> program. So, uh, Yeah, yeah, about that. Uh, you've been dropping the ball, guys. We had to do something about it. I had to, I had to throw a fire. Dropping the ball on what? Our episodes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're uh, like, what, what? Two weeks ago, it, it didn't come out till like Tuesday morning. What, what's with this? Look, it was. It had something to do with the time zone. Oh yeah, blame the time. It's, it's, it's digital. There are no time zones. Uh, that's exactly right. A digital time zone. Listen, I don't need you. Uh, sneaking into my podcast. This is supposed to be an interview for your co-host. Yeah, you're sneak obviously in. not I getting was it. Handed the keys. You won't be. You won't be the co-host. This is more. It was scheduled as a courtesy. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. You know I, what? I, I have. I I have been loyal from the beginning, sir. Is from that, the beginning. Is that a genuine apology? I'm the only other person, other than that dude in London or wherever he's from, that has listened to the entire back catalog. My Thank mom you, listens okay? every week. She says she's yeah. very proud of me. Well, well, your mom lies. Listen to me. Also, 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 you and Kevin are like, oh, I've never podcasted with anybody but Kevin. You have been on Low Blow twice, sir. No, twice. I haven't. I, I uh, yes, co-hosted yeah. with you several times when original yeah. Gay Dave was not able to make it. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've been on be I've been on Low Blow quite a bit. And listen to me, you, you apologized earlier. Was that a genuine apology? For for what? What what do I need to apologize? I'm in the right here. You already apologized. Your people gave me the plane. Big E high five me as I was walking in. He's like, oh, no, don't worry no, about Big E. We've docked his What's pay. Up? He's been docked. Wow, good. So earlier you apologized, but I assume now not only have you forgotten the apology, but it was never genuine to begin with. I'm, 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 I, I believe it was a sarcastic apology as to wondering what you're talking about. Because well, well uh, I'm here to help you, mm-hmm. and you've ignored me. And okay, well, here, here's the thing. The episode you guys did was great, and well, um, you. and despite thank everything, you. you are you're uh, far and away in, in the leader position as far as getting the co-host position. Well, why didn't you lead with that, man? Now I'm all like rambled up and like you know I love you, bro. I love, I love you too, Atomzy. I love you too. All right, um, I miss you. I miss I, you know what I, you know what hey. I miss during COVID is is a uh, the human touch. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. We gotta figure out a time to human touch. We we do. Hey, just for the record, we at least we cleaned it. We cleaned the whole plane. It does look. It smells good too. Thank you. Kevin's Thank been you. taking his shoes off in there and stinking it up with foot smell. I would never do that. You would. You would never. We even that. had cup season practice for you. Okay. No, you're right. All right. Well, thanks for doing the episode. Um, I guess, and I'll let you know the results of all these interviews I'm doing soon, as far as a, a, a permanent replacement co-host until Blake comes back from whatever he's yeah. doing. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess that's it. I will, I'll catch you later. All right. Love you, sir. Thanks, Adam Z. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Shit. Shoot. She's be actress. Did she ever do anything I would have saw? Maybe bitch so she started a pilot. What's a pilot? You know, it's on TV. Man, you know I don't watch TV. Yeah, but sure. Where there's a bench called television. I have a bench shows. Yeah. One of the biggest shows on TV, the main one show is called Pilot. And it's surely one of the people pick the show on the straight line. So I want to make sure they accept it to come to TV programs. She didn't come to nothing. She started one of the ones that became nothing. show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilot
Pirates of the Past. My name is Jason, and with me is the funny joke machine. It's Captain <laughs> Kebmo Slice. Dang it. I was going to say that. Oh, you were going to say it? Where, where, uh, where are you going to interject that? Somewhere in the... Uh, at Anywhere. Literally anywhere. We're talking about a pilot today that's about stand-up comedy uh, guys just yeah. s- sitting around cracking wise. More like sit-down comedy. Yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> oh, that's about right. Uh, you know what? It's so boring. I thought it could have been a, a lay-down comedy. Yeah. <laughs> Prone position jokes. Uh, <laughs> Blake had once famously on an old program called you the funny joke machine. Yeah. Which... I don't think it was intended to be like as funny as it was, but it was yeah. very funny. It was really funny because he, I, I was doing my normal try hard thing when I, uh, when I meet people, uh, and I'm like trying to, you know, obviously just trying hard. You impress the hell out of me. Uh, the first we're on what episode seven here of of me, uh, being co-host of this right. very program, seven episodes in a row. Okay? Correct. I think that at this point, I the tryhard has worn off a little bit. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. take the foot off the gas, yeah. man. Uh, that's first, all. That's all the fan feedback I'm getting. First and second episode. Uh, if you we'll go, go back, to- go back and listen. Go back, won't you, please? Yeah, tryhard. So, uh, I my tryhard thing was I was just I was just I was just flying. I was on, I was on one. You you were on heroin. <laughs> Can't do it. Right. I was smoking crack cocaine. Yeah. What's the hardest drug you've ever done? I guess cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> regular cocaine. Oh, just regular crack cocaine. cocaine. Yeah. Was it was uh, it um was it like like you know sometimes yeah. sometimes they say it's it's laced like yeah, your yeah. pot's laced. Yeah. Was, was that the situation? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Which I didn't know until after the fact and that's how you did get you, but like fucked. But but did you like you you like something something's in me now it's different. Yeah, no, totally. I uh I remember like I think the guys, he was, I mean, classic dickhead college kid move. That's a total asshole move to not tell someone. Until, until right after I did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. fucked up. I know. He was a fucked up guy. But no, you know what? I was going to say like, oh, but then I grew to like him. No, I actually, fuck, I hated him till the end. You know what? I, I hate him right now. <laughs> he was he was a real asshole. He lived with my buddy Matt. Uh, do You know what? Do whatever drug you want. Uh, yeah. But just let the person yeah. know what you're doing, it was, man. It was, it was pretty messed up. Holy crow. But uh, it was... It was just uh, I was just like f- just freaking out. It was fine though. I did I just you know go home. You know, <laughs> I mean that's the best thing to do. So I've known people just that um, like love cocaine. Yeah, and who have done it for years and years, and not that people yeah. I hang around with really. Yeah. But um, did you ever? Did you ever like? Mm, I don't know. I kind of maybe, maybe maybe I'll revisit that. No, like I, I there is definitely an allure there. I mm-hmm. I can't lie. I'm a person with a very addictive personality. You're smoking some weed. Yeah. You get some of this cocaine, and you didn't know yeah. what it was. The yeah. guy tells you, and, and you're thinking, oh, my God, I'm kind of freaking out. But after the fact, you're like, there might be something to this. When I went home, yeah, it was great. I went home, and I cleaned my buddy's apartment, and I was like, fuck yeah. But <laughs> like, did, you, did, you, ever, did yeah. you ever like purposefully do it again or, or think about, maybe I should, uh, I, could, I, I get a lot done doing this. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I dabbled like one other time, but it was when I was like really drunk. Yeah. So like- Getting drunk and and doing that, it just like makes you, it it like levels you yes, out. Yeah, like so, yeah. so that's like not good. But I was still very tired. And I think I was that would be dangerous. Drunk. Yeah, as as, be, as leveled out as good as that sounds. Like oh, okay, cool, you're level. But but that just invites more usage from each side. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's I terrifying. knew I knew where I was at too, and it was at a place uh, physically mm-hmm. in a place where like. I was like, this is not, I don't want to be these guys. Bouncy house. Yeah, I was not one of these guys. No, I was, it was in a basement oh, of basement. some kids that I yeah. just barely knew from high school. Yeah, get the fuck you out know? of here kind of situation. Like, all oh, right. Good. Yeah, yeah, I was like, all right. Um, Time to go. Okay. <laughs> that was cool, but uh, you guys do this every night, <laughs> I think, probably. I don't yeah. get myself in a ton of those situations, but I remember yeah. one time, I think I told the story years ago, and I don't have to tell the whole thing, but it, was, yeah. it is Christmas-themed. Mm-hmm. I was once at a, a biker bar. Mm-hmm. Did you ever hear that story? I don't think I have, no. Um, you know what? I, I feel like I'll know like partway through the story. If I, I I'll tell it real quick. Yeah. I'm not going to get into details about who I can tell you offline, but like yeah. someone that I'm close to... Um, they, uh, one of their relatives said, hey, can you bring this person over to um, my bike club? I yeah. was like, oh, club, that sounds nice. Yeah. And I, I didn't think at all about the person. I was like, oh, this person is awful. Yeah. But then when I got there, I was like, oh, this place is awful. And it was literally a like a biker gang headquarters. Yeah. And, and I spent a Christmas there. <laughs> it was it was a, a home? It's It was like a two-story home. And then, like the first floor was all like that classic... 
um, 12 inch by 12 inch black and white checkered flooring with a bar that had yeah. black t-shirts all across the wall that just had every curse word you could think of. And then there were like barefoot children running around. Like it was a bad scene. Oh boy. Thick with pot in the air. Yeah. Dudes with like big 12 inch knives hanging off their belts. Like it was not good. I mean, um, that's. Wow. But we, I mean, we were welcome there. Yeah. And we weren't in any danger, but I did not want to be there. Yeah. That sounds like a place that I would love to have an experience. I at. definitely had an experience there. Yeah. And I bet we did about 20 minutes. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we, we hightailed it. But the guy who invited us was mm-hmm. like very grateful that mm-hmm. we came and yeah. very happy. But I was like, you are not a good guy. That we would be, that. see, the thing is, that that would be a situation in where I might be pressured to do something that I probably wouldn't normally do. I don't know what was going on in the back room. We you're, did not you're, go, oh. you're, a, you're a bigger man than I because you you probably weren't drinking at this time, were you? No, no, I was I I truth be told I was I I I arrived with children. Oh, okay. So I I had kids with me and I mean even so, like I wasn't going to like if I didn't have kids with me, I wasn't going to party with those guys. Yeah. That's yeah, terrifying yeah. to me. I would have been yeah. scared out of my uh, mind. Yeah, if I was in a situation where it was just like, you know, I had nothing going on. I probably would have, because I I like to do that. I yeah. like to I like to get in the shit. I yeah, I understand that. There there's definitely you, you appeal. You probably understand that about me because I am truly try hard. Let's go back to it again. I, I, I'm a there, try hard. There is no. There is definitely appeal to um, having some sort of controlled or the the um, the illusion of controlled chaos in one's life. There is an For appeal sure. to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, then you know you got those guys on your side. That's basically what I would be trying in that to situation, for. Right. Yeah, that's. I, I remember me. going there, and the guy sounds very scary. The guy me. who invited me, who's part of this gang, he pulled me aside, and he's pointing at some of the uh, the shirts, and he's like, "The shirts have different names of different like local clubs." Yeah, and this is what he this is what he says to me. He's like. It's like, I probably shouldn't be telling you this. And I said, stop right <laughs> stop there. It. Do yeah. not say anything else. And he's like, no, no, no. And he's, he's basically telling me the oh pecking God. order of, because lo- there's like multiple local bike gangs. Yeah. Okay. And he's like telling me the pecking order. But like, as soon as he said that, I seriously said, stop right there. Stop. I don't okay. Know. okay. But he didn't. He kept going. But then like, even if he does tell you that, you just go, oh, okay, what am I yeah, going to yeah. do with this information yeah, anyways? Yeah. Like, I'll be like, back in a half hour with the local police. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, okay, probably shouldn't be telling you this, so you're like, stop, stop, stop. But then he tells you something that proceeds to not be very interesting. It or... wasn't crazy interesting, but it was still like, hey, do you want to know how our, our criminal activity works? And yeah. I was like, I, I mean, not really. No, I think I could probably figure it out if I wanted to, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Know, you guys drive around on bikes and steal things with people at 12-inch <laughs> knife point? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> I think I could figure out from looking at all the characters around this place. I don't know. You guys are all damn dirty felons. Is that, oh, is that what you're doing? This isn't here? just a sex cult. <laughs> I thought that's what this was. This isn't the blood bank. I don't this know. isn't the bank. <laughs> I can't pay off my loan here. Is that what you're telling me, buddy? I couldn't. Turn out I couldn't oh, pay off my own. That was Matt Phillips then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, was, that was fan and uh, frequent guest of this show, Matt Phillips. Yeah, that was him. Okay. Yeah, family, Wouldn't family that be great, movie. though? That's like the perfect cover. Like, he, he would be the... He would be the it's, you can't even write that movie. He would, I mean, be the, he would be Thomas Crown Affair with how... Uh, the, the, the movie writes itself. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, this is something... This is kind of a, a secret that I've been keeping um, that I'll uh, unleash to the world now. Okay, you? Should, yeah. Um, I go, as you know, I go to a lot of, uh, garage sales yeah. and estate sales. Definitely. I love, I love finding thrifted things, things that may be worth something yeah. that, and I can, and a lot of times lately I've been cleaning out some stuff and flipping mm-hmm. things. Yeah. And there is an app called Virage Sale, mm-hmm. virtual garage sale. Yeah. And it turns out Virage Sale sucks. There's not a lot of ha- happening on that. There's a lot happening on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, yeah. So I signed up for Facebook, and I've been on not, Facebook for a couple months. Not surprising. And I've had a few friend requests, and I just ignore them. Yeah. I don't want anything to do with anything social nah, yeah. on Facebook, but I'm on Facebook now, yeah. and I'm having some success selling okay. shit. You're, you are uh, an anomaly. How, uh, how so? The marketplace on Facebook, I have uh, had success in the past, and I have seen posts from people that I know. Yeah. And I know to uh, do kind of the stuff that you do um, with, with the, with with the, the flipping? flipping and stuff yeah. and like antiques and stuff like that uh, from my hometown who 
as of late, as of the past six months or something, been very vocal about how bad Facebook Marketplace oh, has it? become. Okay. So it was great. You you missed you missed the glory days of it. Maybe but, so. But if it's, I think it might be successful for you because you're solely using it for that. That's because the, yeah, that's the it. ads that come in and like you know everything, all the bullshit. As that soon you as get. you see like if you see something you want, you click on it and they see the person's profile and they're like, hey, this is everything else they're selling. And then you click on their name again and it'll take you to their actual Facebook. Yep. I bet there are sometimes when people are turned off by what they're seeing there. With me, there's none of that. Exactly. I, ha- I have no likes. I have no posts. You, exactly. can't, you can't tell what I look like. Perfect. You can't tell what my uh, political associations are. Nothing. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, he has a thing. I like the thing. I would like to buy the thing. You can. That's it. You have my permission to use um, one of a uh, picture of me. And you know what? Don't think I won't. Because it's unoffensive. Mm-hmm. It's just the picture of you is unoffensive. Yeah, just like a picture of my face, right. just as the profile picture. You got. I've always said that you and uh, Denzel Washington have the most <laughs> asymmetrical faces, and, and damn near. <laughs> there is beauty in asymmetry. Well, you got that drooping eye. You have that one drooping eye. It, it beckons to like he's definitely had a stroke, but I know that you haven't. Maybe a stroke would even it out. Broad strokes. Mm-hmm. That's what we're all about here. Broad strokes. That's all, all, uh, ironically, my favorite porno. <laughs> Is it one? Broad strokes? Oh, yeah. Is it just guys jacking off? It, it's, it's girls <laughs> from the 50s, a bunch of broads oh. just stroking, man. I'll be stroking. That's it. Just listen to that song. <laughs> listen stroking. to Clarence Carter. Clarence Carter. Clarence Carter. <laughs> So, oh boy! So, so that's kind of my secret. That's my big news. I'm on yeah. Facebook now, mm-hmm. but my mom and this guy I used to work with both friend. I say, hey, well, hey, why don't we be friends? Yeah, and I, mean, I just ignore it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what, your mom. Like, Come on, mom. You live two doors down from me. I know what the you're up to. The only thing that your mom would do would tag you in pictures, probably. But then that would just lead to more people trying to add you on Facebook. But it doesn't yeah, matter. I'm gonna ignore them all. Yeah. No, I want nothing to do friendship wise on social media. I use yeah. Twitter for the program here, mm-hmm. and I use Facebook for marketplace, so mm-hmm. I can make a, a a little extra bread. Yeah, that's and that's not to, nothing to be ashamed of. Also, uh, I I have said it before on this program years ago, and I continue to say it. The Twitter is more than just a show, mm-hmm. and I enjoy. The takes that you have on the Twitter. I don't do it a ton. You but don't yeah. do it a ton, yeah. but when you do, I enjoy it. It's well, good. that's very nice. Of you and to pe- say. and people, you. people like it. Do do people like it? I, okay. I, I mean, when I retweet it, people like it. Okay. I think. Do you have any? Do you have any banter you want to do? I think that was banter, right? Wasn't it? We did it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I actually have more for you in this segment. Okay. We're, we're going to really put the shine on you. Okay. Oh, that's a wrestling term. Yeah. I've been watching a lot oh, of Al Snow videos. Are we lately. gonna wrestle? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, are we gonna wrestle? I'm gonna put you in a figure four leg lock. <laughs> give me the eight. <laughs> give me the figure eight, baby. I'm gonna give you the Charlotte Flair, baby. <laughs> yeah, I know what's up. Um, here, my notes say uh, since today's program is about stand up comedy. Yeah. Uh, my notes say talk to Kevin about his stand up comedy. Yeah. And then there's a few other notes that we'll get into. But you, you famously or infamously graduated, mm-hmm. have a certificate from Second City, the prestigious improv and comedy school out of Chicago, Illinois. Correct. Yeah, it's run out of. Piper's Alley is uh, the location we're talking about, North and Wells. Uh, 64 is North Avenue there in Chicago, in Old Town, the historic Old Town. And you can go there to see shows at the Second City that they put on. Yeah. You can also go there to learn how to be funny, man. Right? So I want I, we always I every time that this comes up I learn a little bit here and there but I that's kind of why I just said things that you didn't know about it. <laughs> I, well, I I'm, I am genuinely interested. I, I yeah. think it's like one of the coolest things you do. You ever. do bring it up often, and you do tell me that you're in, interested about it. But it's basically uh, what I did is what people who are living in the city and who are looking for that little something to do, uh, and and that they. They either don't have any experience and just know that they have a good sense of humor and are funny. So they go through improv is the program that I specifically went into. I got my dip my toes into different things, sketch and stand up, too. But improv was the thing that I was most interested in because it was the thing that I think I was the best at of all of the disciplines, I guess, as you could say. I also think like um, like when I went to school in high school, they're like, you could do uh, you can take French or Latin or Spanish. And I was like, what's the most what's the one that makes the most sense? Spanish. Yeah, that's the most widely used for sure. And then all of all the disciplines you just mentioned, I think improv 
is yeah. is the one that is can be utilized the most. I remember, yeah. you know, I had, um, I used to listen to a, a podcast called Risk, hosted by uh, a member of the state, Kevin Allison. I know him, yeah. And then Kevin Allison was like, hey, um, I'm actually, I have a class, and I could do one-on-one or in groups over like a Zoom kind of thing, hmm. where I can teach improv. And, and he yeah. says a lot of people just take it, like business people take it, to help them yeah. gain confidence where they're giving speeches or presentations. And so to me, it, the improv faction... Uh, makes the most sense as far as what can be utilized in all facets of life. A lot of lawyers in the level A class. That makes sense. They dropped off after that, but I mean, uh, it's not what they didn't want to do it. You know, their bosses suggested it. Kind of, they're like fine tuning a skill for their yeah. profession, not trying lawyers. to be a, no, they're not trying yeah. to get to SNL. There was one lady who was a lawyer who, you know, her associates or somebody recommended, you know, and she was living in Chicago. Hey, go to Second City. It's take a one night a week class, whatever. She really liked it. Um, you know, and she was along for my journey pretty much. I kind of uh, cut ties with one class because I got busier at work or something and I wasn't living in the city. So I was just kind of training. But uh, so I, I had like one group that I was A, B, C and it's, it goes A, B, C, D, E are the levels, right? I, I, w- I was in one class for A, B, C or maybe just A and B. And then I had, so what a the long story short, I was in three different like classes so the third one that I was in, it was the longest together, and they had been together since level A, pretty much. So they had this rapport, they had, yeah, shorthand among them. The, the lady who was in my level A class, who was a lawyer, she uh, stayed in that one class, and then she switched for some reason also work, same kind of situation. We ended up in the final class together again. And she, w- I was like, oh my, I'm so happy that you're still doing this. She was... You know, married lady, she she didn't have any kids. She just had a husband who was also a lawyer. But I was, like, so happy because she got really good. Like, it, it, you can really see it. And she enjoyed herself. And she was doing it for more than just getting better at talking. She had fun. And that's what it's all about. It's that's, it's going, it's, yeah. you know, hey, I'm going to join a kickball team just because i got to get in better shape, you know. Um, by the end of this, you're just having fun. Hopefully you're having, having some fun. fun. Yeah. yeah, it's like you're not just working out. You know, yeah. having fun. And, you know. Hey, socialize whenever she was great. Her name is Marion Cruz. I'm still friends with her on Facebook to this day. She just had like a, a daughter right around the same time that uh, I had a son. So it's really cool to like have those people on. So that's that's my pro for social media, but it doesn't really matter. But like, well, you, I'm on Facebook can, now, so maybe yeah. she'll uh, li- want to be my friend. We'll <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah. But that that's that's another kind of inside baseball thing. So she, it is up for like professional people to to yeah. fine tune their skills, and she ended up staying that was really cool she had no intentions of doing so which was really cool. we were we were all surprised to see her at level b i'll say that well i mean you know? t- i bring obviously i bring all this up because today's uh pilot is about stand-up comedy but you yeah. you focused on improv but you did do some yeah. stand-up yeah right a few, few nights and where would you where would you perform stand-up comedy? there was one it was called the lincoln lodge it's where my cousin hosted so is oh, this geez. a open mic night it was yeah it was it was open mic night the first one I did was an open mic, and I crushed it. And the second one I did was like, uh, it was kind of an open night, mic night, but he like wanted me to go up on a certain spot. There were guys that were like, it, it, it becomes more the open mic nights kind of become more structured. Um, like the different nights are just structured differently. It's really difficult. Every place that has them like all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like jam nights, you know, like an open jam in at Peoria Pizza Works. It's like this night is for guys that are more into funk. We we got the drum set there. It's like those open mic nights. Like sometimes it's like, all right, you get to do ten minutes this time, or you, you know, you get to do five minutes. But like this one's the absurd night, you know, okay. whatever. And this guy's gonna be there, and he's gonna be hosting it. And then he, so it's like the second time I did it was just more. It was a different crowd, and I didn't do as well. And then I, I've done it, I've done it like at church stuff too. <laughs> like I've done, I've just done like gigs sure. that, where I, I, I MC, but then I have a, sure. I have like a tight five. Yeah, like, yeah. As and an I, MC, you got to do some segue I stuff. I did that. I did that like, I did that a lot when I was like nineteen or twenty. Can I, you know? can I put you on the spot? Do you, sure. Do you have like a a joke that you remember that that did all right? So, something a Kevin original, a, a Kemo slice. Yeah. It was something about my mom, um, how she would always, I I don't, I can't set it up and do the punchline, 
That's fine. But my mom, she she always uh, she had her. It was before Karen was a thing. Obviously, we're, yeah, th- we're going yeah. back like twelve years. She had her customer service voice, you know, okay. on the phone, and uh, she had different voices like on the phone, like uh, talking to her friends. I, I always knew what the situation was if I. If Based I, on your mom's if I, if voice. I, if I came in the door, yeah, yeah. she was always on the phone. Okay. I mean, it was a very suburban thing. So it was you doing yeah. different voices in different situations, yeah, right? That's pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I get it. That's cool. It was, And that you could go for a little bit with that one. Yeah, for yeah, sure. That's like half the set. And so it was, was, probably, it was maybe you threw back to it later. You did a call back on one of the voices. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. cool. It's just formulating that. I have it in a notebook somewhere. I, I've never written yeah. anything down. Sometimes you get ideas, but I never like, I, I wouldn't know what to do in front of a crowd. So it, it, for that's people who do. have done it. Like that's interesting to me. My cousin always told me, he he, he, he every Christmas mm-hmm. he gave me. Oh boy, sorry. It makes me tear up. He this, gave this me. Is, it, you're teared <laughs> up because this is the cousin who had passed he, yeah, away. Yeah, passed away. Yeah. He gave me a notebook every Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's basically saying, "Hey man, you're funny." A, bl- a Write blank, it down. a blank notebook. <laughs> yeah. He knew I wasn't <laughs> using the one from last year. Yeah. He's encouraging me to to. To do it, to I, write it down, man. Get every it, year, get it on paper. A small, right? a small like one that fits in your pocket. Okay, yeah, and yeah, a little. Uh, what do they call that? Scratch pad, a little uh, moleskin. Moleskin. I I bought some recently because I had uh, I had to I had to like throw them out. <laughs> get get that moleskin. Get that buck slip so in your I had, pocket. I had Something to, funny comes up. Write it down, I had to man. Throw out those empty ones because I'm like I'm never gonna fill these up and I'm just gonna start crying every time I open uh. it up. So like I, I bought some actual moleskin ones. I have them in my car now. Is it, do you think they're be, actually made from moles I, skin? When you feel it, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. I, I'm not sure. Well, I'm I, not sure. I seriously over the summer I killed a handful of moles because they were uh, messing up my yard. Do you, do you feel it? And then I wrap my notebooks in them, and it's <laughs> it's fantastic. It's it's exactly what you would think it would be. It's spelled weird, moleskin. Mm-hmm. The actual like brand. It's like Skyne. Yeah, that, yeah. Today we discussed the pilot episode of Strictly for Laughs. Thank you, Kevin, for talking. Oh, to Strictly us. for Laughs. Thanks for talking about your stand up. Uh, I the, don't. You know, for the record, yeah. I really don't like talking about it. But oh, you like not? to bring it up. Why? I don't know. Okay, I'm sorry. The, no, 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 no. Apologize. No, no, no. <laughs> don't don't be sorry. I don't like talking about it just because like I re- I regret. I regret not doing that. I I don't regret anything in my life mm-hmm. because of where I am right now. This is this guy's. You just tuned into serious R. I don't regret anything in my life because of where I am right now. Love my wife. Love my my baby boy. My soon to be baby boy also. But I really do regret not giving it, giving it a harder try. Specifically, stand up, or, or just comedy in general. Comedy in general. Sketch comedy, I wish I would have gotten a little bit more into that, but that's like here or there. I could have been really good at improv. I could have gone to the conservatory, which is kind of like the graduate program. I could have been in a stage show. I could have uh, linked up with, uh, God knows, Tim Robinson. I could have, you know, yeah. who knows? Well, how about this? I was young enough. That's that's what that's the thing that's really like sticks it, with. I was nineteen. Yeah, yeah. And who, I was who knows? I was good. Who I was knows? funny. I was funny. But I was you just, just sh- you still are very funny. I was just a shithead kid, <laughs> and I was working at Menards yeah, yeah. in Woodstock, and I didn't have any like I didn't think to just move there and like fucking do it. I just I regret it. I regret it a lot, but I don't regret. I don't regret where it. you that's, are now. That's why. That's why I don't like talking. Oh, about I'm sorry. It. You don't <laughs> have to. I apo- didn't realize you didn't like you, talking. No, about you it. don't. You don't have to apologize, and I will gladly tell you. I know you can bring it up as much as you want, but that's the reason why I just like don't. Offer it well. Well, know? to reiterate, and I'm sorry yeah. for prying all of that out of you. Don't don't apologize. To, to reiterate, I, I'm bringing it up because of the pilot we're yep. talking about Strictly today, for laughs. and because I I think it's it's so rad that you've done those things. I, I I really am impressed with you as a person and what you've done comedically. I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass. I really yeah. think it's cool. And any information I can get out of you, yeah, I always like and I I uh, store it in my brain. Yeah, I don't like blowing smoke up my own ass. I think that's why. If you could literally um, do that, I would be impressed. Yeah. Like, I saw you suck Big E's dick last week, you know? And I was impressed with that because, I mean, he's a big guy. But to blow smoke up your own asshole? Whew. They call it French inhale. What would that be? That's a from Brazilian, Greece. A Brazilian inhale. Ex- a Brazilian exhale. Is, is that something called? to do with, like, ripping the hair out of your taint, too? <laughs> it's got to be, right? You said the word taint. <laughs> you, go, you go in with a mouthful of smoke, you leave with a mouthful of hair. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? I look like I got uh, Don King and a scissor hold. <laughs> <laughs> and a 
with and, and a headlock with my legs. <laughs> headlock uh, with my legs. Headlock with my legs. Yeah, strictly for laughs was in the year of our Lord nineteen hundred plus sixty two. Great year. Sixty two. Great year. Um, there's some things that happened in nineteen sixty two. There's, th- yeah. I mean, like most years, there's like three hundred and sixty five days in a year, right? I think there's um five hundred twenty five thousand six hundred minutes. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, how long does it take to get AIDS? <laughs> um, everyone. Everyone has AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I, Jason, I hate to break it. What about your dog? He's got... Um, he's got <laughs> gains. <laughs> <laughs> what does my dog have? Uh, gains. I... Um, <laughs> Team America World Police yeah. is um, a movie that I – it's one of the very few movies I've ever seen three times in the theater. If that if that speaks to how much I enjoyed it and how, how like, away from the norm it was in yeah. general, that I love – that was unbelievably funny to me. Cars. You saw Cars? Three times. <laughs> Took three different chicks. Oh, shit. That's Didn't incredible. Didn't kiss a single one. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Can't do it. Uh, all right. So let's go back to 1962. In, in our, our minds. minds. And to do so, we'll talk about some things that happened in 1962 so we can properly understand Strictly for Laughs and then proceed to love or berate it based on the year in which it was made because to do so otherwise, oh my God, it would just be fair to Midland Stitious, <laughs> right? It would be unfair mm-hmm. to I, Midland that. Stitious. January 1st, your wife's birthday, the Beatles mm-hmm. auditioned for Decca Records. But heard are, that. But are rejected. Decca Records, I know that name. It still exists, right? Or no, is that just one of those old-timey ones? I hope it doesn't because they did not sign the Beatles. If I'm a guy at, at Decca and they said, hey, are you the guy that uh, said no to the Beatles? I would just jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say that he didn't? I, I pray. Oh, Lord, do I pray. Say a little. Oh, my God, <laughs> do I pray. <laughs> and, uh, say a little prayer for you. You ever been to the Golden Gate Bridge? Seen it. It's like orange. It's not even like gold. It's more, is it orange? It's oh um, my god. Yeah, it's like a it's like a red or like a burnt sienna. Ah, uh, I would. I, I've have been, you seen it? Have you seen it? I've been across it. I went. You, you drove on it? Yeah, yeah. I, I drove across it into Napa Valley, and then my yeah. friend stripped down to his underpants at a vineyard. It was very funny. Nice. And then we drove back across it because we had to get back to where we're from. Yeah. And we, we went to Alcatraz too. Yeah, we went to San Francisco for a vacation before we were married, and um, but you did go across the bridge. You had to have. We did not. That's so you. We didn't. You fucked up. I know. We we went to Golden Gate Park and had a really good like view of it and everything. Oh sure, yeah. But we didn't rent a car. I wasn't. We, I wasn't twenty five. Well, Steph was twenty. That's a weird thing to be twenty. It's twenty five. It's for just more expensive. It, it, you can do it, but it's just more expensive. Mm-hmm. My brother worked for Enterprise. That's how I know that. You could be your own boss. They give you the tools to be your own yeah, boss. Yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> I will fail. <laughs> but like, you can rent a car at uh, like eighteen, I think. Probably like your arm and yeah. leg situation. Yeah. But uh, in the, the Golden Gate Park, they have that like Gear Deli chocolate place over there. Did you go there? We smelled it. It was closed. Oh, it was, was like closed. On, it was like on a Sunday or oh. something. We did it. We, the thing is, that was one vacation mm-hmm. where I, uh, that was the one vacation that we took. It was one of the first vacations that we took. And after that, I meticulously planned every trip that we've been You on. want to take much advantage of the place where you're at it, right? We, we didn't fucking do anything. There's this, uh, there's this. Uh, drunk in a bar. <laughs> there's a Golden Gate Park, but it's, yeah. but it's yeah. not like by the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, this, it's this park in the middle of the city. Yeah. And my uh, my buddies and I went there, and I remember we were walking around it's like the kind park. of like jungle, like foresty, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's like it's almost like an island, the, the island? island, the island. And uh, we were walking around the island, and we saw a skunk there. Ooh! And this guy came riding by in his bike, and then we stopped the guy and asked him, asked if that if that skunk. We said, "Is that your cat?" <laughs> and we kept saying that to him, and he would not. He was like, he was not having our bullshit at all. <laughs> so he. He's, <laughs> How old were you when you did this? Oh, 32? I don't know. <laughs> Older than you are now? <laughs> you ever see that? You remember Ed Bassmaster? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would yeah. say, would you look at that? Take a look yeah, at that? take a look at We that. stopped people in the park at Golden Gate Park that had two dogs, and we said, would you take? A, would you look at that? We have it on video. We did it for about five minutes, oh and God. we said, would who, you look who, at that about was, 100 times? Who was with you? Do you Matt. Know? Matt. Oh, my God. Matt was there. Oh, my gosh. The other people you probably don't know, but yeah. uh, oh, my God. We, boy, that sounds we like fun. the funniest thing I've ever seen. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. I'm going to have to see that vid. Uh, that Matt Matt would take all the in, all the stuff that we did, all the documentation, the photos, the videos, and he would create a music video. We have a couple music videos. He, is he the best guy? Uh, uh, yeah, and he knows it. I know. We. I, I, the thing is, once he, once he comes over to my house to do this, or uh, if he doesn't, are you bleeding? No. Okay. I just thought you... I chewed finger. on my finger, but it's not bleeding. I know, okay. Because I do that all the time, and my finger bleeds. Mm. It sucks. But uh, Only I, women bleed, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I need to uh, I need to be, be better friends with Matt. I need to come closer to the Lord. Oh, Matt. yeah, he's a good one. He's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Uh, J- January 4th, New York City introduces a subway train that operates without a crew on board. Hmm. If I, um, if I were alive then, I would have thought that's the coolest thing of all time. For sure. Have you ever been on a real, genuine New York City subway? No. Nope. Have, you, have you ever eaten a, at a Subway sandwich shop in New York? No, but I got a slice. I got a slice in New York. Have you ever had a cold cut combo? I think we were only there for a day. I've never. I've. I, the only thing I did is I drove through New York City. I've never yeah. been to it, but you had a real slice. We huh? went to Times Square. Yeah, me and my dad, my brother, and my uncle. That's awesome. We went on a baseball trip and went to all the baseball stadiums, and one day was New York. And yeah, we. I, I was like really present for it, and then we also saw Rupert G. At uh, the Hello, Hello Deli. Deli, yes, yeah, right, oh right my God. next. It, the Letterman. It is, it is truly. It's around. It's lit, like the, the studio's right there. It's, it, it's, it's right there. It's kissing yeah. at Sullivan Theater. Yeah, it's great. Uh, we're, we're currently Colbert does his show, but my my favorite, my Mount Rushmore guy, uh, Letterman. Yeah, but go see. I need to show you the picture of me and Rupert G. Oh, that's it's so great. rad. I, I got atomic uh, atomic popcorn from there. Yeah, he I would. It. He wh- it. Whatever amount of money he wants for anything, I would give it to him. Uh, seriously, I'm like my dad was like. I mean, can we take a picture? I mean, does he have a ton of Letterman shit in there? Yeah, he had like he has like the 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 worldwide pants jacket and stuff. But and like, like things you can buy. He had the atomic to him? popcorn and some other weird shit too. I love that yeah, you know at, that. Atomic pants, yeah, like uh, that stuff. You know, whatever the is it atomic pants? What is the th- worldwide pants? Worldwide pants. He had like a lot of worldwide pants uh, stuff. Yes. Okay, yeah, but it was but it was also deli. You're and like I think you're the only guy that I know seriously that would know some of the yeah, shit Rupert we're talking. G. Yeah, yeah exactly. But incredible. my dad, my dad also. So he was like really pumped, and he was like, <sighs> I feel really bad. Like, do we have to pay? It? He's like, No, I, I love this. He was just he like, he, he was like so happy, and his personality was like, <sighs> it was exactly great. what you wanted. It was. <laughs> I remember, like, uh, so genuine. before it came out that uh, Bill Cosby had, like, like raped a bunch of ladies, he was saying, hey, black hey black guys, why don't you be a dad, and why don't you pull up your pants? And, and everyone was like, I don't like Bill Cosby for saying those things, which so, some of them, like, I agree with some of the things yeah. he was saying back then. Yeah. So it was like, it was a time where uh, he seemed like a, like a grizzled old man, uh-huh. and then he came to Peoria. Oh. And then I went to go see him, and just like Rupert G., it's... He was exactly what I wanted it to be. Yeah, like, man. Like I like to this day, I love Bill Cosby. I love his comedy. You're allowed to say it. And, but like what he did was super shitty and fucked up. But like his comedy mm-hmm. speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. Chris, and like Chris it, and yeah, there you go. They're they're <laughs> often cited as the modern day Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah, um, seriously. <laughs> but like <laughs> truly. But like but like all the shit in the media aside, Bill Cosby was exactly what I wanted him to be. Yeah. Are, I, do, do you have to go? Are we? No, 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 no. I it was uh, Gus's. Uh, she was just explaining that Gus is downstairs. He's well, just on the couch. Well, That's let me fine. just say that I was negative nineteen, and I was. De- I definitely feel like I'm in nineteen sixteen. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm in there. I was negative sixty two. Yeah, so it was negative twenty eight then, right? That sounds about right. Yeah. Why do we choose to watch strictly for laughs? And laughs is L A F F S. L A F F S. Yeah, uh, we we chose to watch it because it was on the internet free and did not go to series. Only one oh, episode no. was made. That's exactly right. So where can you find Strictly Laughs for your dumb self? Well, you can do so by subscribing to Couch Hey, Jason. Fi- yeah. For your smart self. What, what did I say? You said dumb self. I, we're in I, 20... We're I in, really don't feel like I did. We're but. in we're in 2021? Uh-huh. Only positivity, but Okay. So where can you find the entire episode of Strictly for Laughs for your smart self? You can do so... <laughs> By subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, your favorite podcast app of choice, and then won't you simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube, Kevin, and hit the Wayback Machine. Uh, 
Sephi Fef Sephi High. Excuse me? I sneezed, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what does he say? Some of them are high, some are high, ho. Some are high, some are chani ho. Mecca lecca high, mecca chani ho. Mecca lecca high, that's what it is. I recently. Long live Jumbi. A few uh, months ago, I purchased a Pee Wee Herman doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, with the Pee Wee Herman doll, I also got. Uh, did you I know, tell you I have one? You have a Pee Wee Herman doll? Yeah, did I not tell you I have one? I would love in to my, see it. In my parents' basement? I would love and to I see it. And I have cherry, too. I have cherry, too. The, it's like you put your hand in the back and move its mouth, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that. Seriously. And then I also got yeah. Terry, the pterodactyl. That's that, amazing. I, we had that at one point, but I think my dad gave it to someone. So I've got. Pee Wee Herman and Cherry set up in, in my room, just kind of sitting there. I can't believe I haven't told you that. I, have. I yeah, you haven't. That's incredible. Yeah. But I've also in my bedroom, I've got a couple of stuffed uh, ducks. Yes, yes. And, and I know uh, those. one's on like a plaque, mm-hmm. and one's on like a slice of a log. Yeah. So I, I went to a Hobby Lobby and I bought a slice of a log myself. I was go. thinking about putting Terry on the wall like he's taxidermy. Oh. Should I do that? Why would you not? I just need some positive reinforcement. Positivity 2021. Uh, smart self. In a summary of the pilot, a round table of comics of the day, sitting, chatting, and telling funny stories and jokes. Good. Good! That's the big one. It's the big one. All right. Huh. Interesting facts. It's a perfect, it was a perfect summary. Uh, we're going to talk about interesting facts that happened. That happened. No, they, these are facts. That's all you need to know about him. And Conrad, uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know ya. Don't know ya at all. You don't know what hard times are, Daddy. I don't think you do. Um, being a white male in America, you know what? I don't have a lot of money, but Only I sure as hell. In America. I don't know what hard times are. I've never really fallen on hard times. Do I have a cavity that needs to be fixed and I have I can't afford it? Sure. But I have not really on hard times. We're all on hard times right now. Play that song. Hard times. Let this go. Don't stop it before they start singing dog police. Or right as soon as they say the woof, woof, woof. Let it go, please. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Can I add this to it? Can't do it. You can add anything on top. Can I add this to it? You can add anything on top. It's a good song. Did I let go too soon? It's okay. It said woof, 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 right? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We'll just let it play during interesting facts. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, release date, July 1962. Fact. Yeah. Hosted by Dave Barry. Dave so, Barry. Some of his notable works uh, include guest appearances on Get Smart, Green Acres, and Some Like It Hot. Some Like It Hot. Some Like It Hot and Some Sweat When the Heat Is On. You ever hear that song? Sure. <laughs> like I said, sure, before you were done asking me if I heard it. All right, turn off Dog Police. I'm sorry. I need. I want to listen to that song fully uh, someday soon, though. Uh Dave Barry, I have interesting facts about Dave Barry. Is that okay? Go. Um, he, his Wikipedia page was edited heavily uh, multiple times from the months of September 2020 to present day. Last edited wow. six days ago. Do you know what, what's, what caused all this rampant I, editing? I looked at the person. It was one single editor. Who did this, right? Now, the Wikipedia page was established in like 2016 or something, and then throughout the years had a couple things added to it, probably from people like us who had seen some of his work, looked at it like, oh, he was also in this. Okay. I mean, let me just add it on there. I think it might be a job. It might be a job. What do you mean? Um, Somebody goes in and does that. And oh, is paid for that? Per so to click or something. Not from Wikipedia, maybe from Wikipedia, but... It was just some profile of like somebody who was a furry. Like I clicked on the profile and it's like a profile. It was the first time I ever saw like an editor's profile. It was like a picture of a furry or a, a My really? Little Pony. It was it was kind of weird. weird. And I could have looked at more of their edits, but like this specific one, and it's a very meticulous and manicured Wikipedia page with links to like everything that he had done. I, I had never heard of this guy and. I looked on his IMDb, was like, I don't know any of the shit that he's in, you know, except for 
Some Like It Hot, something like that. So like that was the, like I think Marilyn Monroe was yep, in Some yep. Like It Hot. It was, so was uh, the the one the reason why I know Some Like It Hot, Some Like It Hot and sixty one the movie. Uh, the first two DVDs we ever bought as a family. My dad bought those That's two That's the Jackie DVDs. Robinson story? Is that no, right? uh, Roger Maris. <clears throat> Roger, oh, sorry. Yeah, 61. 42 is Jackie Robinson, but 61 was a movie that came out in like the 80s. Uh, but yeah, Some Like It Hot and 61 <laughs> were the first two DVDs. And for some reason, it was like, oh... We're not gonna buy any more <laughs> like oh, for, for a little. They bit. put the cap on the DVD <laughs> for, for a little yeah. bit because we still had the VHS player. You guys just know? watched the hell out of sixty one. Could recite it front and yeah. back. Yeah, and some like it hot. And then uh, and then it was Fargo, and we weren't allowed to watch Fargo <laughs> because it was too it was too bad. Because the guy gets thrown into a wood chipper. Still haven't seen it to this day. Not bad. Thanks. No, I, I I saw it one time. It's got Steve Buscemi in it. Yeah, Buscemi. He's one of those guys who's got an asymmetrical face too. I'd say. Uh, Dave Barry it almost sounds like uh, Dave and Barry. Is that a place, or is Dave and Buster? Isn't it? Dave it, and Buster's. It's weird that uh, people like ma- that, like spend their time meticulously updating Wikipedia pages. I've never done it myself. I, fe- I feel like it's a job. It, it probably is. Um, I don't know. So it, it might be Wiki- like I said, might be Wikipedia that's paying. It might be some other. You know, uh, oh hey, this is the job where you. You know those. Things. I wonder what came to light in that time period. They're like, well, we got rushed to, we got to rush to update it. But it looked like it was, you know, every other week or something. They just mm. added more since like September. But well, here is a uh, a list of notable guests that were also on Strictly yeah. Laughs because the aforementioned Dave Barry is the only constant throughout yeah. the pilot. Host. He is known as the host. He's the he's the constant, otherwise known as the host. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one, and it. As far as I'm concerned, maybe the most uh, notable is Mel Blank. Not nah, maybe. He is for sure the star in this. Ar- More than Dave Barry. Arguably the greatest voice talent of all time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's let's count them down. Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. Sylvester the Cat. Sylvester Stallone. Speed. <laughs> Frank Stallone. <laughs> Frank Stallone. He did, both, he did the brother oh, Stallone. Come on, Sly. <laughs> Oh come on! I got a hole in my head. head. That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> got a hole in my head, Sly. <laughs> or no, he called him Rocky. Hey. I got I got a hole in my head, Rock. Hey Frank. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah. <laughs> Barney Rubble, Mister Spacely, and of course, Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny, yeah. Mel Blanc. Uh, I remember uh, these these movies, these uh, shorts, the cartoon shorts mm-hmm. that the Warner Brothers came out like the fifties and the sixties. Yeah. And then um, in the nineties, Nickelodeon was like, "Well, we got to do twenty four hours worth of content." Holy Christ! And so they like Nickelodeon yeah. had like three hours maybe a day of actual content they've created. Otherwise, yep. it was like showing Dennis the Menace. Yeah. Old or, shit. Um, or a dentist the Mentalist, and they were also <laughs> showing all the Warner Brothers cartoons. So I used to watch a lot. Of Warner Brothers, yeah, and I still Same. say, I still say, fuck Hanna Barbera, yeah, like, like fuck Disney. I know you're Warner Brothers. I know you're not a, yeah, you're not a Hanna Barbera guy. Uh, but yeah, Warner Brothers for sure. I was always that because of Six Flags. Also, oh sure, we, we, <laughs> we were close to Six Flags, so we got to see all those characters all the time. Gurney, Gurney. That's why you carry someone away with after they break their neck on the football field, <laughs> just, isn't it? <laughs> just, just today. <laughs> Right now, this moment, I just realized that's the same word. <laughs> it's spelled differently, but it's yeah, Gurney over Gurney. Great America. Yeah, but it's a. Uh, I'm a Warner Brothers guy because of Space Jam. Also, mm-hmm. Space Jam was huge. Greatest song. Next, uh, next to Bat Dance. What? The, oh, just just the Space Jam space song. Everybody get up. Space Jam. Yeah, I think I sang it right. I wonder if there's an Oki. <laughs> I wonder if there's an Okie version of that. Everybody get up. It's time to slam now. now. We got a real jam going, going down. Now. Welcome to the Space, space Jam. jam. Mm, you have no chance. Mm, you have no chance. At the Space Jam. Oh, my God. Oh, it's All so right. good. All, All right. right. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, but Mel Blank, you're talking about Warner Brothers. He's he's like the top of the heap, the king of the castle. He is the voice of Warner yeah. Brothers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You also have Mo Howard, which, like, the... This is a black and white pilot, and mm-hmm. it, it, like the it's not a very good like the definition is bad. So like I I remember while creating the show notes for this that Mo Howard was in it, but mm-hmm. I I I'm thinking back now I can't pick out which one he was. I uh, I, I I revealed last week that I did not watch mm-hmm. this one either, 
this was great to just listen to. I was in the car. Okay. Um. So and I have uh YouTube Premium, no ads, baby. Oh, nice. Uh, and so I j- you can lock the screen while you're doing it. So I wasn't even tempted to look uh for for both of them. So gotcha. I just listened to the full thing. I mean. This this worked great as audio. Yeah, <laughs> it worked as as well because the video was like it's you like know, a stand up. Looked at it. How, like, how often do we listen to just stand up through a yeah, streaming service? I know. It's, yeah, this is kind of like that. Yeah, but Mo Howard, who was Mo. who was born in the fucking eighteen hundreds, he performed a version of himself from nineteen thirty three to nineteen seventy five as one of the three Stooges, the yep. aforementioned Mo. Mo. Uh, his acting credits um, are over two hundred and forty different uh, pro uh, pieces long. And it overwhelmingly majority of them are as the Mo character. Yeah. So if he's done like, if he was part of like over two hundred forty projects, like two hundred were as Mo. Twenty. Yeah. Like it, it's incredible. Like, and it I is. personally, my grandfather, who I feel like I got a lot of my humor from, totally. Um, he loved the Three Stooges, yeah. and I in turn, I, I actually do like the Three Stooges quite a bit. It, it's the right kind of stupid for me. Yeah, we talked about that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Turner, Turner Classic Movies. I was a big fan That's of that right. channel, and the Stooges were on there. Gotta love the Stooge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also stars uh, Rose Marie, a staple mm-hmm. in uh, American television for over 50 years. She was cool. She was cool. Cool, cool lady. She was Sally Rogers on 167 episodes of The Dick Van Dyke Show. Also sure. starred in The Doris Day Show and played Norma Bates in the uh, 1998 um, Psycho. Psycho remake, like the shot for the odd, very odd Gus Van Zant, Vince, like Vince Vaughn. Yes, uh, Psycho. So, oh, oh, did they rename it? Yeah, Psycho. <laughs> my friend Mike Matt always says Psycho. What are you, some kind of Psycho? <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense at all. Yeah. Plans were to bring in non comics to do some jokes, but the show never got that far. Yep. End of interesting facts. Yep. It's the end. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Uh, I had said uh, a few weeks ago that when it is an old, old wooden ship or an old, old pilot, that I would look for relatives of these dead people. You did say that. That's right. And I did look for some of the relatives of the dead people and couldn't find any that were very publicly on their Twitters as uh, as you very much experience in the earnest uh, world. Right. You know his nephew. Yes. Uh, you know Jim Jim Varney's nephew is like yes. big on Twitter, and like his whole bit is, "I'm Jim Varney's nephew." <laughs> like, Justin Lloyd. Yeah. So I, I have his I have his number in my phone. Yeah, I couldn't. Let's give him a call. Um, I'm on an email with uh with him too. Oh, are you? I'm copied on an email awesome. with all like the patrons or whatever. Dustin like, oh, okay. sent something, and so I have like a. Oh, Daniel, you're a patron of that show. Yeah. Of course, uh, I have like Daniel uh, Butler Butler's email. Yeah, if I ever want to reach out. <laughs> it's weird that Dustin would allow that to happen. Yeah, it, all... <laughs> it was like fifteen or twenty emails. And um, that's it. yeah, Twitter responses wise, they're all dead. Yeah. I, I know that they're uh, the grandson of Curly is out there, but uh, not Mo. Really? Uh, yeah, it's on um, Office Hours a lot. Oh, with, really? With Tim Heidecker, they, yeah. they they had talked to the grandson of Curly, and, they, and he is he is he. Doing things, or he just like he kind of ta- he tries to fan. talk like Curly a little he's, bit. Oh no! And, and basically, what he does, he has like Three Stooges brand coffee or something. Like they have a drop that's kind of it's, poking fun. Yeah, at it. but, but it, they did talk to him. And it's his thing. It's his thing. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I couldn't find any. I I, I didn't search super deep, but in the future, I, I plan on searching a little harder to that's try right. to find a relative because yeah, that, that's a, a, it. Any help is well received, and yeah. I will say this. If I was the grandson of Mo Howard, I would think that's pretty fucking yeah, cool. So. Yeah, I didn't. I, I wasn't able to j- to like drill down that 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 well. You I'm know not worried I mean? about it. Yeah, it, no, no. I, I but I, I I I said I would. I attempted for uh, probably about a half hour, and that was all I gave it. Oh, that's more than I gave it because yeah, well. the, all the main people are definitely. Oh, well, they're dead. just all deceased. Yeah, yeah. Th- this is you know almost sixty years ago. Yeah. And these people were in their forties or fifties at the time. So definitely. They're all gone, but that's okay because we're about to break down the pilot Ooh, episode of Strictly for Laughs. Kevin, would you like to start us off? Yeah, so it's it's Dave Barry. He says a quick little joke at the top. Now, uh, just just I mean, we'll get into it, but it's literally just all jokes. It's all just yeah, like one liner jokes. Yeah. Now, uh, he is the host, and he tells I, I believe. <laughs> Here's the ironic thing about all uh, white men in the in the 19 
early 1960s, they all sound the same. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, so and, and if it, you're watching a black and white program, some of them look the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it is, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with 99.9 repeating white men. Yep. And it's it's a grainy, crappy version of a black and white show from the early 60s. Even the yep. audio's not great. Yeah. But uh, he tells a joke at a table, and then he gets up from the table, and he yep. comes and addresses the camera, mm-hmm. and he's uh, – he basically you know, welcomes people to the program. And then first up, he has Alan Reed, who I didn't mention in Interesting Facts, but yeah. he was the voice of Fred Flintstone. Yeah, he, he mentions that too uh, when he's introducing. So it's, he kind of just introduces the round table that's there to start. Mm-hmm. And then it's kind of like little breaks in between. I, like I said, I wasn't watching. Were there like little cuts that said like commercial here or something or no? Yeah, um, it looked like they, for, for most of the pilot, he, he it was Dave Barry and three other comics, mostly yeah. white men. Mm-hmm. You have Rosemary as the one woman. one one outlier of the yeah. exact white men, yes. and they're all sitting around like a round table. But obviously, they're sitting in a half circle fashion, so they yep. can all face the camera. Like cheating out. It seems like a set um, of like a like a like a mid century modern home, mm-hmm. and they had they had people sitting there. There wasn't like, like a like, studio yeah, audience, but they had like like the um, the Hugh Hefner um, show. Do you know what I'm talking about? I Hugh don't. Hefner had a TV program. Okay. Um, on the Playboy Network. Y- well, it was, God, it was in like the 60s, you know? And he oh, had a TV okay. program that was basically this. I'm just realizing just, now. Just people sitting around chatting? Just people sitting around. He would have celebrities come on and he would like interview them, but it was a very laid back interview. Grateful Dead came on and oh, played. Oh, really? Cool. It was one of their first televised wow. gigs. Um they came on and they they just like played into commercial and out of commercial. He would have bands do that, uh, and then yeah, it it was he would interview famous people pretty much uh, for the most part. Uh, but this is this is the format is we we've gotten into it in the past, uh, and you and Blake have many times that it is the is early TV. Right? Yeah, well, let's see what sticks. Yeah, so this format was kind of a play on that kind of format, which I know also. Uh, there's a famous. Uh, 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 he's going to be a saint in the Catholic Church. He's a, he's okay. a famous um, character. Uh, I guess you would say he was a bishop. Uh, he's from El Paso, Illinois, hmm. and I'm talking, of course, about Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. Have you oh, seen really? any signs that no, say that, like on the on the road? Like, oh, you're coming to the home of Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. He was big time. He was like the Archbishop of New York, and he took Hugh Hefner's Playboy show and did it. Catholicism, like, but it was still cool. He had on. You mean he did a version of? It. He didn't go on his show. He didn't go on his show. He had his own program. He had his own. Pro- and and the and the Playboy show, the Hugh Hefner show, it didn't have like. I it was, mean, it was like they had sexy. The, like, yeah, they had like the the babes and the onesie bunny things, like yeah. carrying around cocktails. But it wasn't like whoa Check and zooming in tits. on them. Yeah, it was Ooh, like yeah, they were just kind of in the background, actually being servers. That's what the yeah. the that's what the uh, the magazine was. Yeah, say, exactly. say the magazine's got like seventy pages in it. You're going to get about six or seven pages with big, beautiful breasticles. Otherwise, that's it's it. like cool articles about modern things and and hit people, <laughs> right? What what got you the breasticles? No, just like a guy that's like. I read the articles, <laughs> <Yeah>. man. <laughs> I rip out. I rip out all the dirty stuff. Oh yeah, dude, sm- uh, t- hustler. No, no uh, way. Gross. No hustlers. Hustlers, g- dude. I got I got turned on to foster the people from hustler. <laughs> They're a great indie band, dude. <laughs> I knew about them for anyone because yeah. a hustler. Did I, have to, <laughs> did I have to look at some guy getting his cock sucked? Sure, but I found out about foster the people. <laughs> uh, Pumped but- up kicks is the least of their works. <laughs> I'm a Houdini guy. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. Uh, so he, the Archbishop had the same show, but it was he would he would still have on celebrities, but they were like uh, that was back in the day when like you know, c- Catholics were not a laughing stock <laughs> of he, he, yeah. of religion, you yeah. know, for you know all the, the kid diddle and stuff. So like he he would have on like people like JF not JFK caliber, but like you know people that were kind of famous higher people, profile folks, but they were Catholics. Hugh Hefner did it. This one is just comedians, and they're all like stand-up comedians, basically. And like you mentioned towards the end of Interesting Facts, they were going to have people that are from different acting, yeah. you know, dra- dramatic shows that are just telling one-liner jokes. And he says that towards the end of the program. But so first we have uh, the set, the Mo and the Fred Flintstone guy, kind of a commercial comeback. They're just literally 
telling jokes. Yeah, I, right? I don't want to break down like each of the jokes and, and do it like that, but I do want to say, 1962. What is stand up comedy at this time? Is yeah. it, is this is this Appalachia uh, like Borscht Belt? Well, what is it? Is it New York City dinner clubs? What what does stand up comedy look like? Got to be New York City in dinner clubs or like Vegas. You know, like okay. Because there, there aren't really comedy clubs no, in the no, 60s, not, right? No. That kind of happens in the mid-70s. Yeah. Right. That's when it started, kind of the comedy store. So before yeah. that, you're like, you're you're literally opening for musicians sometimes. Yep. You're, mm-hmm. you're in Vegas. Most of the time, it is the opening act for a musician, or it's a uh, just one guy. There's no, like, openers for a headlining stand-up guy. It's just one stand Jack Benny. You know, it's yeah. just him. That's it. <laughs> That's all you get. <laughs> like, and I know it's it's, it's not really, really a thing anymore. But like the Borscht Belt was almost kind of like um like a modern day uh, Wisconsin Dells. Yeah. Right. This, this. Oh yeah. An area of the country that isn't like very desirable, but there's a lot that someone said we're gonna we're gonna plant a resort here. We're gonna put a flag in the ground and claim this. And yes. what are we gonna do to get people here? We're gonna have uh, entertainment. That's it. And that's, that's what the Borscht Belt it. was, right? And I assume it was the Borscht Belt because it had something to do with uh, Russians. Well, it's the Russian word, I would assume. Yeah. Uh, so we can break down, like you said, we're not going to break down all the jokes and that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna literally, I'm gonna just go right in the middle of the pilot here, sure. the audio, and just like this is that's the kind of jokes that they're t- telling, and that's going to be the best way to describe the jokes. That, that sounds telling. great. Let's do that. You know, I was thinking that while I was listening to it too. So. Hopefully, yeah. Literally, you could put it almost anywhere and, and get yeah. some sort of a joke from one of the participants. And it, it is a rotating group of people. There's yeah. probably like four or five different yeah. groups that come in and out and talk. Commercial to cut, you know, just it, like a rough cut. Right some in the of them would be new settings too. They're, they're yeah, new yeah, in and, the same kind of room. But they had an audience there that was laughing, so you'll hear the laughter here too. And it was just, you yeah. know. The, the the audience was mainly people like sitting right behind them. It wasn't yeah. like a big studio yeah. audience. It was just yeah, it wasn't that, a stage. Something I did find frustrating with the show was that you he wouldn't always introduce the panel. Never. He, ne- he almost never. The did. first time he did, but beyond that, like I was like, oh, who's that guy? Who's that one? But and and in the last one, he was kind of like, oh, you, we we like what you do on on TV and the oh, like when stuff, he was saying we thank you and goodbye, he would kind of yeah. But mm-hmm. like other than that, I want to know who was there. Yeah. But let's let's hear one of the yeah. jokes from the middle of but the program. The says, yes, might I please? Oh, politics is funny, you know. So this Englishman was about to be hung. <laughs> That's a funny line. And he had the rope around his neck, and the executioner says, do you have a last request? And the Englishman says, yes, might I please have a Windsor knot? <laughs> There's a good example. That was, like, perfect, and I just went smack dab in the middle of it. Yeah, so, yeah, it, it's You could have like, gone anywhere and, and got, like, a, just a, a two-line joke. An Englishman was about to be hung. Any last request? Yeah, can I have a Windsor note? Yeah. Well, go out in style, right? And then, and then ha, 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 ha. Like, that amount of laughter is is what was happening you know yeah. that amount of laughter was exactly what we heard throughout the whole thing and those you know length of jokes and then yeah at the end at the very end uh, the last group of people and then again it's it's usually dave barry and three other folks there uh dave thanks everyone he mm-hmm. says you know i appreciate you checking out this informal get together which is how he describes it uh, it, it consists of professional and non-professional writers and, and we hope that we see you next time because we're here strictly for laughs yep Please remain seated as we are now. He did name the drop the program didn't he? at the very end. He did. And, and who who would who doesn't want laughs? Come on, yeah. L A F F S. Uh, why the show didn't work? There's actually sometimes I have information on okay. this part of the show, and yeah. I do hear do as got? well. Uh, comics forcefully trying to be on is is pretty cringy, is what one person wrote. A a, a good comic usually has some intelligence. And, and uh, that is what we want to see: a panel of intelligent people discussing issues of the day while being allowed. To be funny, yeah. I mean, like that's what that British show is. Yeah, actually, actually, no, no one wrote that. that. Those are my words. <laughs> I, f- I forgot I wrote that. Uh, that's what that British show is. You know what I'm talking about? With that uh, moderator, and he always has um, on different comedians. Graham? It's, no, it's not Graham Norton. It's just like, you know what I'm talking about? That's it's what I was like thinking of. Graham desk. Norton. It's not that. It's just like a desk, and it's that funny guy with like the hair, and he's like. All right, we're going to give you a category on this one, and then we're going. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's like just comedians and what's his name? I don't from know that. Bride, from what? Bridesmaids. The guy Chris Dowd or whatever his oh, name. Oh, Chris was. O'Dowd. Chris O'Dowd. He was on the uh, the It Crowd. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the It Crowd. Oh, it was just a mixed bag of you know British. Uh, shout out Eddie Izzard. Uh, mm. uh, she was on there. <laughs> Did you see that yeah, news? Uh, uh, getting a dress for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, 
I don't know. It's a show, and I agree with what you're saying there. Talk about the issues of the day, but then also be funny about it. This was just, yeah, it was... Um, Sitting around telling, like, like um, public domain jokes. Yeah. I mean, there is there is something to that. I think. I, it's not ironic. Like, Norm MacDonald, like, currently will tell old-timey jokes I ironically. Was, I was going to say exactly this. But but, but this is not... Norm MacDonald. This is not what this is. These are public domain jokes. And back in the day... Uh, comics would recycle other people's jokes they, a lot. But this, my point that I was going to make about exactly this, yeah, is that this is this is it. This is the beginning. This is like to hear those corny jokes. Yeah. You had to go to Borscht Belt, yeah. Vegas, New York City. You had to go to those places yeah. to hear it. This is broadcast. Mm-hmm. So it's like not that crazy. I mean, like I, I, the show itself, whatever. There, like, there is something to this, but, but like, and I forgot, I forgot that it was my own words. Yeah. But like, <laughs> let, let's let's talk about the the issues yes. of the day and allow the, allow these people who are supposedly funny people allow yeah. them to be naturally funny yep. and not have to just dish. This isn't um, comics unleash with Byron yeah. Allen yeah. where a guy or Byron Allen sits in the middle between two comics on each side and sets them up. It's not Bob and Tom show where they're yeah. saying, "Give me your act and I will lead you into What's each one, one of your jokes." Dag, what a dag do. Premium blend. Oh, premium blend. Yeah, <laughs> Dag, David Allen Greer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is this is a situation where those I are think... good words. I agree with your words. Well, thank you. Yet I think that uh, I think that that will come later. Yeah, but this is like like we have stated many times. It's early. They don't know what they're doing. Right. We'll see. They're trying. Well, they're, they're trying. trying something they're new. Trying. They're trying. Uh, but I feel like this is also like a, a pre pre precursor to uh, shows like politically incorrect yes. or tough crowd. Yeah. Or, or real time with start Bill. the clock. Don't don't. Uh, real time with Bill Mahar. Yeah. You know. Um, but t- I said that once <laughs> to my dad. Like uh, like honestly, or I was like, joking, what is like, what is this Bill Mahar guy? Because <laughs> I saw it on the TV guide. You sure. know, on the TV when I was like, like who middle is, school or high who, school. Who is this uh, Vince McMahon? <laughs> McMahon. <laughs> McMahon. Who Jay Mahar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I say this is what I say. Get the H out of comedy, right? Um, but Tough Crowd was a, a show that 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 was a yeah. that was a good one too. Where it was talking about, I was on Comedy Central, I think, hosted yeah. by Colin Quinn, and he would have like I like remember it now, yeah, three or four comics on, and like uh, Greg Giraldo and I was, uh, Patrice I was, O'Neill, all the dead ones were on. I was too young, man. That mm-hmm. was like that was right when you were probably right in it, right? Like high school. For you, I think I was college. Prob- j- college, yeah. Oh man, that was like hell. That was like fifth grade for it, me. It, so it, was it like, really was people not being politically uh, correct, not being woke, yeah. kind of speak in their mind on on, on on situations. What was it called? <laughs> Tough crowd. Yeah. God, what is the name of the British show? <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. It's something like that. Cr- Chris O'Dowd, I think, is the no, guy. No, no, no. It's not. He he just he was an example of somebody who would be like a guest I, on. The oh, show. I thought you said he was the guy from. No, Bridesmaid. the guy with the hair. It was another milky skinned guy with with black hair. But Chris, I've seen Chris O'Dowd on there before. Oh, like okay. he's they would have on like four people and David Attenborough. Does that ring a bell? The uh, the guy from all the uh, nature yeah uh, things. Uh, and then Richard Attenborough, of course, being the man who created Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um, while you're looking that up, I'll just move, I'll just press this button right here. Yeah. Ooh, look at this button. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. All right. Um, you know, we don't have like a magical key or some uh, access to the dark web. Anyone can find strictly for laughs it's on youtube and because other people can find it other people have seen it and they've uh expressed their feelings about it uh through reviews and or ratings yeah did you find what you're looking for no imdb sorry uh, keep going keep going imdb of course which stands for fix it again ted it's a, a internet movie database we take a look at uh ratings from around the world and say what do you think people have scored Strictly for laughs on a scale of one to ten decimal points in play. Six point four. Six point four is exactly correct, and that's from eight ratings. Critic reviews. One of my favorite blogs, Vintage Forty Five. We've referenced him a lot on the show, and I, I dug into his website a little bit. I found out that his blog stopped in uh, two thousand eighteen. Who's that? 
Sorry, I, I Vin- just found it. So Vintage 45. We've, oh, re- we've referenced yes. him a lot as far as critic yes. reviews on the show. And I, this is this is also what I found out. After he stopped his blog in 2018, which while, while we were doing Couch Pilots, at that time he had done over 4,000 posts. Oh, wow. He says the, pre- the premise of Strictly for Laughs was simple. Host Dave Barry sat at a table with various comedians. They all told, jo- told jokes. That's it. Some were actors, some did stand up, and others were writers. There was some sort of audience that ringed the room. It was supposed to be a party atmosphere. Most of the jokes weren't funny. The show was divided into segments where four comedians would be at the table with Dave Barry. That's it. The only interesting thing was seeing Mo Howard in a suit and without his Three Stooges hairstyle. It, it was weird. Uh, I went back after I had uh, kind of done a little bit of light research on IMDb that that Mo was in it, and uh, that's really cool. Yeah. I went back and I looked at it, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's Mo." I, I I really pretty rad. Yeah, it was very cool. What what did you find out about the show that you're talking about? Eight out of ten cats is what it's called. <laughs> Fucking no idea. Worst name ever. Yeah, but who hosts the, it? Who's the guy? Jimmy Carr. Oh, okay. He's a comedian, right? He's a comedian. But you're you're right. He the does, hair. He does have that milky white milky skin. Milky white skin right. in the hair. You're right. Now, Chris Tuckley was on a panel show. I was looking at funny British panel shows, and it's like, I couldn't narrow it down. And then I finally found Jimmy Carr's name when I was looking at it. panel show. British panel shows are a thing. It's like the top 20 British panel shows. My daughter's FaceTiming yeah. me. Yeah, let's get her on the phone. Yeah, let's get her on the horn. Hello. Yeah. What's up? Are you recording? I don't know. Yeah, I'm recording. What's up? You're not recording? Yeah, I'm recording. What's up? Oh, okay. I'm just going to say it. I just found out all the Harry Potter movies are on Hulu. No way. So you're going to start. What? So, I'm glad I didn't purchase them all then for you. Good Lord. <laughs> I'm about to start watching it right now. Cha- right now. Chamber of the uh, Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah, sure. Is that the first one, right? Sorcerer's Sorcerer Stone? Stone's a real, the first one, yeah. I don't even know. Okay, well, I know nothing. Well, enjoy L- the Harry yeah. Potter show. Uh, Laurel, I got a question for you. This is Kevin. Uh, this is your friend Kevin. Uh, are literally all of them on there? Except for the fifth one. Is that the last one? How many are there? Is that Prisoner of Azkaban? I think, I think there's seven. Goblet of Fire. The, the six and seven, the Deathly Hallows, the last couple ones? I didn't watch any of them except for the last couple ones. Watch them all. Once you get the last ones, those are all good. That's all I'll say. Yeah, I, I, I think there's eight movies. I now. think the last one is, I think it's seven books. Last book is two movies. It's two movies, yeah. Those are the ones that I like. Well, enjoy. Are Thank you, you. Are you eating an empanada? <laughs> no, a crab raccoon. Ooh, well, that's the empanada of the Far East. He's, he's bright. <laughs> all right, I'll see you later. I love you. Bye. Love you too. Bye. You've got it on on recording. She said she loves you too. Yeah. Yep. I'll be li- when she dies of uh, the coronavirus. I'll go back and hear my daughter say that she loves me over and over again. Uh, oh boy. Let's see a couple of viewer reviews real quick. Yeah. Um, what do you got? Six out of ten seemed like a good idea. This is from M two uh, Mallory from February of two thousand thirteen. It looks as though the idea was to create a, a kind of cross between Hefner's Playboy's Penthouse. Look at that. That's what it is. And yeah. and Mike Stokey's Stump the Stars. The result Ooh, Stump the Stars. Yeah, I used to. You're familiar with yeah, both yeah, of those. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. The result, however, is very very strange. Not not unentertaining, just strange. <laughs> so um, it said very well. Oh, listen to this. Eight out of ten scars. Borscht Belt Heaven. That's uh, cool. this one's a quick flicker. Of TV past, an unsold pilot that's sort of D-list Algonquin roundtable. Algonquin, a collection of mostly a town next to Crystal Lake. Great town. <laughs> a collection of mostly past or prime Borscht Belt comics gathered around to try to crack each other up. I'd have to agree with the network execs that long-term weekly appeal might have been limited, but this yeah. particular collection uh, gathered for the plot is surely worth 22 minutes of your time. Probably pilot. Agreed. Uh, and finally, uh, four out of ten scars. Occasionally f- uh, funny. Occasionally. Yeah. Um, so is it any good? Well, at times it is humorous, but frankly, the comics on the show just weren't all that funny. They had been funnier, or had they been uh, funnier and more familiar, I'm pretty sure the show would have been better received uh, as as if was, or as it, I don't know, it seemed like they were uh, 
<laughs> they, they scoured the more lowly resorts and venues to find these guys. I, I think it's. A, I don't know about that. They I, were getting some pretty high profile names. I thought for the time. Yeah, I think we can blame my reading on uh, the poor grammar and also booze. Yeah, probably. Uh, uh, there we ladies, are. Whoops. Whoops. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. Whenever I fart, no, not when I. Whenever Steph, I, hey, spoiler alert, she oh. farts in front of me. Your wife does. Yeah. Whenever she farts, I say, I say, whoops, and she laughs, I think, every time. She farts, and I go, whoops. <laughs> I think I think every time I do that, and I think every time she laughs. I was uh, I was dating this lady, and uh, I would say uh, whoops, because I, I never fart in front of ladies, but I would say yeah. whoops when I burp. burp. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if I ever didn't say whoops, she would say it to me, or like, why didn't you say you whoops, go. or she would say whoops. Mm-hmm. I, I had set such a... a an accidental burp precedent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what I do when I either sneeze or burp is I say, excuse me, I'm sorry, fully. I don't know why. Yeah. And then when I fart, I say, yeah, I say the same thing when I fart too, but like I really, I have to watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I My farts smell so bad. Right, right. And it's just really like it's. I feel bad doing it. Yeah. I mean, well, have you smelled? You've smelled. I it? bet you physically feel good releasing it, oh, yeah. but you feel bad like feel the effect so you're terrible. having on other yeah, people. I feel so. T- even just Steph, Ian so far has, to my knowledge, the kid has no olfactory on him. Because <laughs> I'll fart like right in that kid's face, and he just he won't even say anything. But like when he You're toughening him up is yeah, what you're I doing. Know. He's when he's it, gonna have blisters in his just, nostrils. Just the other day though, I was changing his poopy diaper and he sure. was like, P U <laughs> I'm like, Where the fuck did you learn that? Not from me. <laughs> I think at daycare the lady does it <laughs> all the time. Yeah, I don't yeah. really I'm not ladies really don't fart around me. Even even yeah. my own daughter doesn't anymore. Like when when she yeah. like my daughter will belch loud. Mm-hmm. Like she's a world class burper. Nice. And nice. she she gets that from me. Yeah, you know what the secret is to world class birching, b- uh, belching. What's birching? Yeah, uh, birching is when you take your lips and put it around <laughs> a bottle. <laughs> you, no, uh, world class burping is right before you burp, you breathe in air. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've heard, I've had some good ones, but it was only like after a big meal. Oh yeah, yeah. oh that's good. Yeah, <laughs> get your mouth off that bottle. Stop lipping. Oh, it's so creepy. It's like you're smiling. <laughs> it's. It's like your yeah, yeah, like your full smile. Your teeth are clenched. Your lips are pursed. Me and my me and my friend have a full Facebook album of us lipping different uh, beverages. Wow. Not only bottles, but cups. You can do it with a cup. You can. <laughs> but when it's clear, it's better because you can see the teeth. Sure. Yeah, yeah, your lips are just fully on display. Yeah, he has huge lips. That's how it started. Is your is your friend Nick Kroll? <laughs> He's, uh, been, he's been told he looks like a mix. Oh, there you go. Uh, let's go ahead and rate this thing and yeah. wrap the show up. Sure. One to seven is the scale based on the uh, television show from the 19 ad 80s, classically, affectionately, and accurately known as Cheers. Cheers. We take a look at all the uh, the main characters for the program, and we assign them a number from one to seven, one being the worst score you can get, and that is a... Norm. <laughs> And seven is the best score you're going to get, and that is Pecker. I love Ted Dance and his Pecker. <laughs> Hell yeah. Captain Kemmo Slice, I turn to you. How do you rate strictly for laughs? I um, I didn't write the, So I didn't write down any notes for the, the past two just because I was listening to them in my car. Yeah, who needs it? And I, um, I also didn't. I could have written down my score. That would have been easy. But I uh, I didn't write down my score on this one because I wanted to to talk about it and okay. see where your head was at and see like am I crazy for liking this you know uh, I I thought it was funny I think it would have been laugh out loud funny in 1962 that's just me I you're, you're I think you might be right yeah I think I would be laughing out loud um, I think it would be a lot funnier than it was now but i still love that shit like i love those rodney dangerfield you know i love those rodney dangerfield style i mean he popularized in the 80s and and, and beyond mm. those 50s and 60s stand-up one-liner style jokes yes. before norm mcdonald took over for rodney dangerfield <laughs> right. it is literally my favorite kind of 
comedy, I think. I've seen in the stand-up world uh, when I was doing open mics or just when I was going to see, um, you know, actual nights with weren't open mic nights. Yeah. When I was going to see comedians that were, you know, fair to Midland uh, good. I would love the guys who did the setup punchline next joke. Dimitri well, Martin. Uh, yeah, Mitch Hedberg. Mitch Hedberg. What you're seeing today usually is just kind of these uh, people storytelling. Yep. And I, I, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but my, no, no, my please, take, please do. Yeah. My take on the storytelling mm-hmm. aspect of, of current modern comedy is that like, oh, there's a million comics. Oh my God, there's a million comics. Yep. No one can tell my story. My sure. story is unique to me. Mm-hmm. There's eight guys over here that could have the same take on airline food, like, but my story yeah. is my own. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, I feel like it's almost a necessity anymore that comics must kind of tell stories from their personal life, and of course they sure. church it up, and of course they, yeah. you know, ting it to give some uh, punch lines and some well timed jokes. But there's so many people doing comedy mm-hmm. that um, it, I feel like you have to tell your own story. Otherwise, yeah. you, you could be treading on very familiar or a territory and maybe plagiarizing people. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, you, you can you can be in in some trouble there, especially if you do what I did, Mama. Uh, Mama. Uh, Mama. <laughs> I don't That's know for, what that is. It's a uh, Big Willie Styles all in it. <laughs> Trying to do what I did, mama up, mama up, mama up both sides. No love for the haters, the haters. You know what it is now, right? Floor seats at the Lakers. Um, Getting jiggy. I'm the greatest, yeah. Getting jiggy with it. That's the one, not Big Willie style. So you could do what I did. And <laughs> I can't say that. And not think of and it. And not think of it. Yeah. Uh, but and And just kind of like. Like think so hard about how can I make that person's joke mine, mm-hmm. um, which is what you end up doing anyways ninety percent of the time if you're bad at stand up, which I never succeeded at, it. or if you're okay at it and and you can do it enough and you you just you know the the nuts and bolts of how a joke works. Then like okay, I want to do something that's like this, but I don't want to do it exactly like it. Now I did that a lot, and I really overthought some of it and overcooked some of my jokes which why they would didn't land but this is, i agree with what you're saying you gotta make it your own but in this day in the, in the 1960s i say this is this it beginning. this is great i'm gonna give this a five okay i'm gonna give it a five that's totally fair um i uh, you know i may not have laughed out loud when i was listening to this but yeah i did smile and i and i did uh i did uh, you know, if you say haha in a text, doesn't mean that you're laughing out loud. I did haha in a text to this <laughs> quite a bit. You this, know, um, yeah, th- this is definitely an interesting. Oh, that's thing. really funny. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. But I never, re- you know, but right? Whatever. Yeah, it, it is. You know, comedy changes, and uh, this this was the comedy of the time. Yeah, it was really cool to see. Like, I didn't know that. Mel Blank we would just sit around yeah. and tell jokes. Like that as far great. as I know, he was in a studio in front of a microphone That's belting it. out weird mm-hmm. voices. Like he, he he did a porky pig on the show, essentially. Yeah. 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 He d- that was him. Oh yeah. duh. Yeah. Duh. He did a full porky pig. Yeah. Yeah. So um seeing people like him and uh and Mo Howard and these people that, that are quite literally legends yep. in comedy, whether it's stand up or T V or cartoons, whatever it was, it was yeah. cool to see a mixture of these mediums. Yeah. brought together i i didn't think the jokes were that funny there may have been one or two moments that i did chuckle but overall it's 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 just a conflict of of current comedy versus then yeah uh the idea is cool they are th- saying what can we do with 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 comedy what what sticks to the wall this tv is a new medium what can we do with this totally there's a lot of interesting things happening here i wish the segues would have been a little bit better yeah um I, I really, it was. It seems like it wasn't fully realized, to be honest. Definitely but, not. Yeah. Like they, they would fade in and out, and all of a sudden yeah. we're there with a new panel of people, yeah. and we weren't introduced to them. I think that's a problem. Mm-hmm. I say find three or four comedians yeah. and have them do the entire show. Give them topics to riff about. Maybe give each one, like like oh, old Carson, right? He, Carson, yeah. he would have a, a comic come out, and he, they would do five, seven minutes, and if he liked them, he called them over and Go they would the chat. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe some of these guys do three to five minutes of comedy and they yeah. come over and talk. I don't know. There, there's There's got to be some way to tighten it up versus mm-hmm. just kind of 
pissing out hey, hey, two hey, line hey, jokes. Hey, you say you said you said something about your wife. Uh, you know, my wife, and yeah. that's how it would do it. And I mean, it seemed kind of admirable that they were doing that, but you kind of think, okay, they had if they did have a rough idea of where things were going, it it didn't really make itself apparent. You know, I'm stuck between a four and a five. I think okay. I'm going to give it a four. I, I I liked it, but I didn't love it. Yeah, definitely some things I could have done better. I yeah. thought Dave Barry was a fine. He oh, he was, was fine. He was a great host. Yeah, yeah. I, I did most of my research trying to find relatives of Dave Barry because I really wanted to because it was his kind of deal for know? sure. It was could have found, found all the people. You know, I probably could have found Mo's grandson or something like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Dave Barry is the guy who I really zeroed in on and tried to find his uh, sons or daughters. You know, but couldn't. Well, you give it a five. I give it a four. Yeah. And with that, we close the book on Strictly for Laughs, and we will never speak of that show again. Until probably a couple weeks. We we might take a few weeks. But join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the pilot episode Uh of I-Man. I-Man. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. When a man is exposed to alien gas, he acquires the ability to heal instantly and survive any injury or toxin. You can find the entire episode of I Man by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. I have a choice, and then simply click on one of your classically blue links to show notes. Go to YouTube, and you know what to do too. That's but it. Do you think anyone's ever um, had like a positive side effect from inhaling your toxic gas? Me? Mm-hmm. Um, like, you're, like maybe you said you're farting in your son's face a lot. Yeah. Do you think do you think that is building up his immune system? Like he's gonna be like they'll use his blood to conquer COVID twenty seven or something? Yeah. Where are the first eighteen COVIDs, by the way? That was the name of my fantasy football team this year. <laughs> it what? was uh the Barf Valley Rage presents COVID one through eighteen. <laughs> my my team name is always the Barf Valley Rage. Nice. Uh yeah, I think it, it can be positive, but I don't think that I am willing to, even if there's a willing subject, right? I don't know if I'm willing to participate in the study. Okay. Because I, because even if, the, like I said, even if somebody is willing, I don't know if they know what they're getting themselves into. Y- yeah. You're which, <laughs> which, which, by the way, yeah. we did not get into this week, getting ourselves into something quite dangerous. What's that? Uh, tune in. Next week to Couch oh Pilots, where we are going to attempt a challenge. I oh, we forgot. We are going to attempt a challenge of yeah, some we, sorts we next forget. week. Yeah, there's going to be a challenge. Come up. We forgot to do it this week. Oh, and I brought like I know accoutrement. Yeah. I, for, I yeah. totally forgot about it. Hey, it's okay. We got we got sidetracked. Um, I remembered the whole time. I was just like waiting for you to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's right behind me. I, I just I just, I just remembered God. it the whole time. God, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Gosh. Um, I will say that I have seen I Man before. Okay. And it will be a crossover episode because I had sat in on yeah. an episode of uh, Dishing Disney okay. with our friend, um, friends of the show, Brianna and Dustin, yeah. a married couple who does a Disney uh, podcast. They, they talk about Disney movies, very popular ones, and some that you've probably never heard of. And that's I Man, right? I Man is one of those made for TV movies that could have been a series starring, uh, uh, what was it, in- from. Uh, Quantum Leap, and also one of the Star, maybe Star Trek Enterprise, oh, Scott fun. Bakula. Oh, Bakula, nice. I know Ooh. that guy. Uh, I, you know, interesting thing. I, I mean, maybe talk about it next week more. But the the TV series or TV made for TV movie turning mm. into a series. Yes, I know of one very like just one that sticks in my brain every time that uh, you guys talk about a movie. That could have been a series or whatever, or a, a, you know, a pilot sure. that is like a long movie. That it's called The Jersey uh, on hmm. Disney Channel, and it was in like the late nineties. Okay, and it was called The Jersey or late nineties, early two thousands, and it ended up being a series, and it was a great show. Oh, really, it was a great show. It was a great. I remember the movie. I was like, oh, this like rocks, and I think that they knew that it rocked because of all the positive feedback they got. Probably it was the early days of the internet, maybe, okay. but it was like. I I always think about that, and so Disney. I feel like I'm excited to watch them. Okay, yeah, great. It's, if it's, I'm invited, of course, of course. <laughs> Who knows? Huh? Yeah. Um, I I man was. Um, it's definitely an hour and a half. I'll tell you that right. Good. Now. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah. go to couchpilotspodcast.com. It's yeah. our entire back catalog of 
of uh, programs there. It's also a way yeah. to contact us through email and Facebook and Twitter. Drop us a line. You'll get frequent flyer points. If you follow us on Twitter, you'll get to see what's coming down the pike sooner than most because we are way ahead at this point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, anything you would like to plug before we go? Yeah. Uh, if you want to listen to um, any of the Couch Pilots back catalog, you can do it on couchpilotspodcast.com for sure. Yes. Yeah. But there is a get in contact with me if you don't want to go to Spotify or if you don't want to go to the website and do it. I got a way to do it on Apple Podcasts. You, baby. you got a secret way? I got a secret wow. way. Wow. Co- contact the show. Get, yeah. Reach out to Kebmo Slice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get up. at me on Twitter at Kebmo Slice. Also, uh, listen to the Sixer Podcast on Thursdays. Uh, that's it. The Sixer Podcast is basically Kevin being a uh, radio DJ playing yeah. six songs with a theme. Mm-hmm. It's always good banter in between. Sometimes he has a guest, sometimes he doesn't. Yeah. I also have a show called um, the what is it called the Ernest P. Worrell Preservation there Society, mm-hmm. where we talk about unmade projects for the character Ernest P. Worrell. He was uh, we we got the information right from the source, the people who created him. It's Very pretty much, insane yeah. that we're doing that. Uh, it's a fun show, but uh, yeah, we have other projects. It's we'll, Monday today. It is Monday. It might be out today. If you're gonna if you're gonna listen to something on Tuesday. Make it karaoke big E. K A R A O K space big space E. That's a good one. We're involved. We have so many projects, don't we? We're just we're got, nuts deep. Got my got my hands and a lot of got my nuts and a lot of soy sauce. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. That's fine. Do you know that? I don't know. Nuts in the soy sauce? No, I don't know. I've never heard that. There's a thing where people said if you dip your nuts in soy sauce, you can taste it. <laughs> well, guess what I'm doing when I get home. Guess what I did M- many times. And I figured out. That you can just smell the soy sauce because <laughs> it's a uh, pungent uh, smell. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I can. I kind of can taste unless, it unless you're eight feet tall <laughs> and you got a long ass torso. You're smelling that just from having it in a little a ramekin that you're shoving your nutsack into. Ramekin, yeah. Right? yeah. Well, this pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone, and we will see you next time. Love you. Do you like that? Is that cool that I said love you? I mean, whatever. I mean, everyone wants their own sign-off shit, whatever you want to say. Do you remember that one time when I said I was going to fade our voices out? And we have to say something at the, weird at the at end, the of, end the of every episode? Yeah. Are you going to do that? I mean, maybe just like the the soy sauce thing. I'll probably just do that. What's the weirdest thing that you ever put your balls into? Ooh. I'm just going to turn myself down fully Plaster, now. Plaster of Paris? What was that? Plaster of Paris.